Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with a quick optimization tutorial for RenderMan 23. Um, so today we're going to be having a look at how to optimize your renders, just some simple things that you can do to improve your render times. This is really good if you're doing animations with lots of frames. Recently I um, animated uh, a short that was a minute long and it had about 1300 frames. So obviously every second that you're spending, rend spending rendering a frame is multiplied by however many frames you've got. So that's 1300 seconds. So if, if you take one second off, you save 1300 seconds in the overall uh, render, which is um, 20 minutes or something like that um, in your total render time. So every little incremental thing that you can do adds up for these big renders. So I'm gonna look at a couple of things that you can do um, to optimize your renders, and uh, they're pretty straightforward. So the first thing we'll do is we'll have a look at our RenderMan preferences and you want to look at render threads. Mine's set to negative three at the moment. Normally you'd have this set to probably negative one. Um, basically this is saying how many cores you're going to use, your CPU cores, um, and I'm going to use all my cores except for three. Negative one is probably the best way to go. Um, I'm using negative three at the moment because I'm recording this. So um, while I'm recording, I am obviously need, need some CPU power to be able to record at the same time. Um, and even at negative two, uh, my computer still doesn't have that good a time. So I've got that at negative three. And um, we'll take a baseline render of the scene that I've got here. It's pretty simple. Um, and we'll see what we can do with it. So I'm gonna set it to a sample rate of 64, which is um, fine and a minimum samples of eight. Um, usually rule of thumb, actually if you set this to zero, what will happen is RenderMan will uh, square the max sample rate, so in this case it would be eight, so it's the same as setting it to eight here. You could set it to a higher sample rate if you are finding that you're getting too much noise anyway. Um, and the other thing that we want to look at is pixel variance. Pixel variance is going to look at areas where uh, RenderMan is detecting a lot of uh, noise, Areas like shadow and specular highlights usually tend to be these sorts of areas, high contrast sorts of areas, um, and it's going to spend more time rendering them. So if you reduce the pixel variance to be even lower, say 0 0.001, um, it's going to be it's going to provide you a um, cleaner render overall. 0.01 is probably fine if you're using the denoising as well. Um, otherwise, you've got path tracing parameters. I've got my indirect bounces set to three. Every light source is going to emit, well, essentially every pixel on your screen is going to be um, pointed, path traced towards a light source. So in this scene, I've got a light over here. Um, and what's going to happen is RenderMan's going to shoot, uh, say, from each pixel on the screen, a line outwards until it finds that light and it's going to sample that pixel based on that light position and the things around it um, and to give you a result. And it's only going to let each path bounce three times before, uh, it, it bounce, bounce indirectly three times. So you'll always get the initial hit it's directly out of the screen. But the um, say if it bounced off this wheel and then hit the ground and then hit the wall and uh, hit this door, um, and then went to your light or whatever, then it would get those extra bounces and that would accumulate some extra color in the light ray. So particularly if you've got, you know, highly specular or very bright colors nearby, you'll start to notice that areas around them will start to have those light, uh, those colors reflected into them. So for this, uh, indirect bounces at three will be fine for the scene. If you reduce it too low, uh, you'll notice that your, your scene starts to look a little bit muddy and darker actually because there's less technically lesser light um, being rendered so yeah probably minimum three for most scenes um, but that is somewhere you can start um, the integrator we're using is the path tracer i'm not going to worry about looking at any of the other integrators for now um, because i'm just going to work on this one scene um, different scenes may call for different integrators if you're looking to render caustics you want to use vcm um, I'm not here. You can also render caustics using the path tracer, but allowing caustics isn't recommended. It is actually more less efficient to render it with the path, tra path tracer that way. When you're doing your render optimization, make sure you're denoising, basically always. Um, if you're not, you're spending more time rendering each frame where you could just render it 75% of the way to looking good and get the denoiser, which is very quick, 
to finish up the last 25% of getting it to look smooth. So I've got my beauty layer selected there and I have got denoising enabled. If you want to learn more about AOVs, which is what this is, um, you can check out the AOV tutorial that I did recently. So we're going to do a final render now. We're just going to click this button here and it will tell us how long this is going to take to render to 64 samples. Okay, so the render is complete and it took 1 minute and 49 seconds. So uh, that's quite a long render time for a fairly simple scene. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to render with all my cores, otherwise it would be quicker. Um, we can see though at a glance that there is a bit of noise. Uh, I will note that the material for the um, car is actually, has got a flake material to it. So all these little dots that you're seeing are actually part of that material. And materials are actually a big part of your render op optimization determining whether or not you need to have things, elements like this, whether they're gonna be visible or you know important in your final render, or things like subsurface scattering, if you need to have them subsurface scatter, um, things like that. Um, we can have a look, at, sort of preview what the denoising might be able to take care of by hitting the N button on the keyboard. And you can see it pretty much cleans up all the um, reflections in the ground there. And most of the elements of the car, um, there's some minor noise here that has been cleared up but also what's happening is the denoiser is looking at all this these um, flake reflections in the car paint and it can't determine whether that's noise or intended so it's looking at this and thinking okay that's noisy I need to do something and it doesn't really do a great job because it doesn't actually know that whether or not that's noise it looks like very heavy noise but it's actually just the material so that's one thing we can do to take care of this and you can tell how much the denoiser will do just by looking at some of these clean areas here. So this is this is still fairly noisy, too noisy for production. If I had, had the denoiser on, that's pretty much production ready now. So even at 64 samples, that's pretty clean. So if we replace this material with something that's similar without maybe these flakes, it would be a lot better. And then we can compare that. But there's a couple of other things that we'll do first, you know, just to give you an indication of the time you can save. Under the advanced tab, we've got render options here. And the thing I want to focus on here is the bucket size. Just increasing your bucket size to 64 by 64 actually can cut a couple of seconds off your um, render time overall. Um, and looking at our sampling, we've got our pixel variance at 0.01. We'll increase that to 0.05. Say that we're reasonably happy with this area here. So we'll get it to 0.05 and see what that looks like. Um, and allow it to run for 64 samples again. Um, and just as a note, I to bring up your inspector and C to bring up your catalog. All right, so with the only thing changed being the bucket size, let's compare our render times. We went from a minute and 49 seconds to one minute 20. So we're saving 29 seconds just by changing that bucket size which is incredible really, and it's something that's really worth noting. Um, we can go a little bit further though. We're gonna work a little bit on our material here for a moment. So we're just gonna jump into the Hypersheet Editor very quick. So I used flakes into the bump normal, so I'm gonna take that out um, of the specular. And now the specularity should just be nice and smooth. Um, and we'll still get this incandescence that I had in the car anyway. So we'll render that again and then we can make a determination. Okay, so we've taken the um, specular bump out and um, this is a comparison. So it does make a big artistic difference. So you need to decide what you're looking for. This could possibly, this effect could be doing, doing done a little bit better with maybe facing ratio rather than the, um, rather than the flakes. Um, just to get that blue highlight on the top a bit more, but this could be considered absolutely fine. And looking at the inspector, we'll see that our render time is only a minute and six seconds now. So we've chopped another 15 seconds off, with the, which is huge. So we'll have a look at the denoise version, and it's not looking too bad. Um, this is obviously zoomed to 300%, so it's not a really good indication of, of your production quality, but you can see some unusual it may or may not show up on the on the video but i can see some sort of blurriness in there which doesn't look quite right so what i need to do and actually here that reflection looks a bit unusual um, so what i'll do now is i'll reduce that pixel variance again but why don't we have our max sample rate 
and then we can have a look at the difference between those. Okay, so let's compare our last two renders. So this is at 32 samples, and this is at 64 samples. So definitely 64 samples was cleaner, um, but we have also, remember, reduced our pixel variance to 0.01. So let's look at this area here, for example. So we zoomed in 330%. So not a huge difference. This noise here is definitely more coarse than the noise um, in the 64 sample one. So it might end up being that 64 samples is the, the baseline for us. But we'll have a look at it at the 100% and use the denoise preview and compare the two. That's actually come up a lot better um, in the 32 sample version with the um, pixel variation uh, variance set to a lower target, as you can see. And it's fixed this. Now, using the, the um, optics denoiser in the preview is not 100% fair because it's not the same denoiser that's used um, when you do a final batch render, um, it's actually, I think, the Hi Disney Hyperion render uh, denoiser, I think, um, but I can't recall exactly off the top of my head what it was called. It's not the exact same one though. You can set it to GPU as well, um, which um, I've covered before in previous tutorials, but I can redo for 23. If you are interested, let me know in the comments. Um, so let's see what the render time is. 52 seconds um, at 32 samples. So you know, we're starting to see going from a minute and 49 seconds to 52 seconds. We've almost saved a whole minute per frame now if this was an animation. So a big, big difference. Obviously, if it was 1300 frames or whatever it was, that's, that's 1300 minutes that you're saving. The other thing I will just quickly show you is we'll reduce the max indirect bounces down to two. And we'll do one more render here and have a look at what it does. Okay, so this is finished and our render time is 47 seconds. So comparing that to the previous, we're saving another five seconds. However, you can already see what's happening here with our areas that are refract refracting and reflecting light. Um, this headlight here, which has got its headlight on, um, there's a light behind it transmitting through. We're not actually getting as many um, bounces. There's some reflective material in there as well. And also these areas here, which are like a, a refractive plastic, um, aren't refracting any light anymore. Um, it's reflecting light off the front face, but because there's no light in front of this, you can't see it. So worth mentioning, if we compare the two though, you can see also the difference that the um, amount of light is, is occurring. So generally it's more realistic um, to have more bounces. There's an infinite amount, infinite amount of bounces light can take theoretically, um, given it's if, if it had infinite energy, um, but obviously that's diffused over time. Um, but if you hit the denoise button, it looks okay, possibly passable depending on your situation. It will also depend on your materials, like I said earlier. I would say for this one, um, at a bare minimum, I would want 32 samples. I would want three bounces. Uh, denoise. This is only rendering at um, HD540 because because obviously I I'm recording this and um, doing record and rendering at the same time, which is taking just the recordings taking about 10% of my CPU. Um, so that's worth noting. Make sure you've got nothing else running on your computer. And um, also when you're when you're rendering, make sure the denoiser on the uh, it preview is off. It will render a little bit quicker that way as well. And um, one other thing you can do um, with your renders, just while I remember, is on your final render you can uh, deselect incremental, and what will happen is it will render up um, each each bucket, which is each little square that appears at a time. Um, and that can actually save you a little bit of time. Um, it, acts, it saved me one second compared to the, um, the other one at 32 samples. So worth noting, not a huge difference, but every second counts obviously when you're doing animation. So we went from a render time of a minute 49 to a render time of 51 seconds with a material change, which obviously made it look a bit different, but this is 
an artistic choice possibly that you could get away with and then a few basic um, changes in our render settings so hopefully these help you guys out there that um, I know I get a lot of messages from people that are going through university at the moment and they've got a, um, a thesis or a, a final project project or whatever to deliver and it's an animation and they're rendering it and uh, they're hating life because every single frame is taking five minutes so hopefully this is helping you guys out there that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below